Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I hope you are all well. I am feeling rather dandy today because we have MPM Megatron landed on our doorstep. Uh, ignore him, that is bootleg Ben and he is sulking because we have a new MPM figure and he's still waiting for the knockoff. <laughs> yeah, this looks absolutely stunning. As you can see, I've got all of these figures to take up and compare it. Uh, so without further... So without further ado, cue the intro. Oh, I have to apologize for bootleg Ben. He gets very grumpy when he is waiting for knockoffs. Uh, what he has to remember is we will still be displaying this Megatron alongside all of those oversized figures from the bootleg community. Uh, let's take a look at the actual box of Megatron. We've got him displayed nicely there on the front with him in his jet mode. Again, we've got that product shot on the side there and on the back, we've got the insertable all spark cube. Got the weapons blaster, articulated hand and articulated mouth. I am so glad I didn't pay 300 plus dollars to get this guy super duper early. Taking a look inside the box, we have a very gorgeous looking Megatron from the 2007 movie, you know, where they find him up in the ice. And we have an instruction manual as well as a loose baggied accessory. And here he is out of his plastic prison and he is gorgeous. I tried to put him on my rotating stand, uh, but his feet have such a wide berth there that uh, he kept hitting into things. So unfortunately that was not meant to be. I need to get some additional pieces, uh, kind of bigger plates I think, so I can use these bigger figures here in the videos. Uh, first port of action. Let's take a look at his accessories. Uh, we comes with a very gorgeous looking Allspark. Some really nice Cybertronian text on there. And I've got him set up at the moment with his wings closed up at the back there. And we get this additional handpiece for him, uh, which can just peg in on the top of his buttocks. And then we've got that piece that was in the baggie that just hangs down and tabs in to the top there, but he looks sensational, and I mean sensational. Whether we'll get a Legendary Toys or a Black Mamba kind of repaint of this uh, still remains to be seen, but this is what I have wanted for a very long time. This is what I wanted from my 2007 leader Megatron. I got rid of him quite a long time ago because it was really kind of underwhelming. I thought the Voyager did it better this ticks so many boxes there. We've got lots of kind of rubbery plastic on here so things don't get broken. Again, that's probably something that will be modified. Uh, maybe you'll get somebody like TF Dream Factory uh, giving us additional claws or additional hands, but the sculpt alone is sensational. Taking a nice close look at that face, the paint applications are remarkably well done. Now we do have the ability to lift his brow, like so, and we can also go rah, 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 star scream. Love the paint decal on this. Yes, we do have that rubbery plastic, and no, it does not bother me in the slightest. Uh, let's put his crest up. Is that meant to be up? I can never remember whether he's meant to have his crest up or down. I think it's down. I prefer it down anyway. But the golds are really, really vibrant. I love the articulation on these legs as well. These are what his legs were like prior to him having to kind of be completely rebuilt. In Revenge of the Fallen. Uh, Movieverse, uh, we have the Rensora, which is the oversized The Last Knight Megatron. We have the Dream Factory Megatron, which is based on the Studio Series figure, and he's done at kind of the MP scale. And then we have the Black Mamba, oversized version of the Studio Series figure, which is over-oversized, I guess. Uh, again, done uh, very much 
intending to scale with the MPM line, although I think he is probably too large. And that being said, having this Megatron in hand, uh, was he 33 feet, I think? Uh, so it's difficult to say which one I think scales the better, uh, but at the moment, the sculpt on this one definitely wins hands down. Uh, bearing in mind, the other three, not based on the MPM figures, they're based on Studio Series and kind of Voyager figures just scaled up. So uh, I think we can kind of let that go detail wise, but kind of looks like a really dark version of the Avengers, isn't it? It's, uh, Black Mamba's like a Hulk on the end there. And here we have him alongside some of his fellow oversized Decepticons. We've got the Black Mamba Starscream there, we've got Dream Factory's Bone Crusher, and Wei Zhang's Armed Cannon until we get the Black Mamba version of Brawl anyway. And who we have him with Legendary Toys, Optimus Prime. Prime is meant to be 28 feet, uh, so I think that works exceptionally right. well. Let's quickly tackle his articulation, shall we? The head can look left and right, and we can go up and down, albeit it is slightly hindered. Uh, we can tilt quite nicely, and we do have a little bit of quizzical motion in there as well. Shoulders have these hinges here, so we can go up and down. There is a pivot on the lower bicep like so, and we can bring the arm up. There's actually a rotation on the arm joint itself here as well, so there's a lot of motion going on. We can get things right the way round to the front. There's a rotation on the elbow. We've got these highly articulated spindly fingers, which a majority are kind of a really soft plastic. We do have a little bit of waist rotation in there. It is hindered at the moment due to the fact that I've got the cannon tabbed in. So let's untab that. Uh, if you look, if we have it up, have it up this way like so, there is these tabs here. They correspond with these tabs here. So let's move the cannon and let's unplug this section here. So the waist can rotate quite nicely. No abdominal crunch in there though. We have legs that can come this far forwards, and that far back. Really kind of a rubbery joint there though, not really as satisfying as I would like. Out to the side, we have these plastic hip skirts which can come out, allowing for the full range. We have a knee rotation, and we have a bend on said knee, and we have pivoting up and down on the feet, as well as a little bit of tilt in there as well. Uh, not sure if the tilt's really meant to be there or whether that's just enough flex in the sculpt. Now to install the Allspark, we can open up this chest and we have a really nice kind of red section here and we can just pop the Allspark back in, hiding it out of harm's reach. Right, let's take a look at his various different weapon forms. This is kind of his cannon arm section, but it can be used various different ways. First port of action, we're going to move this so it locks out to the middle. So we've got these two pegs. This piece here can come up and this is gonna flip out and extend like so, locking into position. And this comes down, pushes and tabs into place. The hands on both of Megatron's arms are attached via these plugs. And then we can bring the arms in and bring the arm in and in, like so. And then the idea is to slot, and push, and slot, and push. And there we go, it's Megatron cannon hand time. Looks like something, uh, some sort of combined weapon from Power Rangers, doesn't it? Right, disconnecting the gun again, we can lock this piece back up, folding that up and over, and just closing this piece off. Uh, keeping this hand off, we can then pull this piece, this piece over, slide this in like so, and then this is going to plug in to the hand. Uh, it's got kind of an attack weapon thing going on there where he's fired it forwards. Uh, you don't even have to put this section on. You could even do it like a grapple claw, so he's fired his fist out to attack as well. That's also a pretty nice 
nod to kind of ball and chain that he had in the animated movie. And of course, uh, we can just skip this whole process altogether. And he could have the cannon on his arm there, much like we got in the uh, 2007 leader class figure. It had that kind of really chunky arm, but I love the fact that they've given us options. And of course, if we just uh, extend the gun first, we can bring that all the way out, locking that into position. And uh, just can go all the way back. I mean, that's a really kind of long cannon thing going on there, but you know, it could could kind of work, I guess. It doesn't look absolutely terrible, uh, considering what Lockdown can do with his head. I think this is quite reasonable. And before I get Megatron transformed up, I will just show you how his backpack looks as it comes out of the package. This is hanging down, like so, in the box, and his wings are extended. See all of this lovely die-cast section at the back here really does kind of make for a really nice looking figure. He comes uh, kind of as standard with his wings kind of extended there and you've got his tail panel hanging down. Uh, but for the purpose of the transformation and personally my personal preference for his display mode, uh, you want to bring these back in, bending this hinge in and bending this hinge in. If you see there is a tab there, although it's not really the most responsive of tabs, it doesn't really lock in as nicely as I would like. And if you want to have it displayed in bot mode, just bring these panels up and you've got a hinge here and that just collapsed down. And it, as mine doesn't stay together too sharpish, it's a matter of angling them and pushing and locking those firmly into position. But yes, I'm digressing. Uh, you want to have these legs brought directly dead center. We start at these hips. We bring these panels around to the front and then bring them down on both sides. The toes are going to collapse down and collapse down. Unfortunately, this does kind of hinder standing him up whilst trying to transform him. Uh, these panels here, untab and untab. This piece here falls back. And then this whole section here is actually gonna rock in like so. It does house in there remarkably well considering. Uh, right, we're gonna unplug this panel from the back. And uh, whether your wings are actually attached or not, and these are going to come out to the side. And this chest panel is going to come down. Now I'm going to remove the all spark as well. With this chest panel released, uh, the arms do kind of tend to fall away from this torso section. And now that we've got this panel piece off, you can actually see the extent to what we could move Megatron's head. It's quite difficult to get access to unless you pop the head up but it's actually on a hinge there. So you can rock that forwards, have that sunk into the chest or have that right back as well, which allows for full range of motion on those eyes and face. All right, turn your figure around. You want to rotate these arms. So they're facing backwards. And you want to look at this section on top of the head. We've got these hinged pieces. These are gonna come out and this is going to extend, and then this will rock forward and tab in. Again with this side, this is going to come out, extend, rock forward, and these will fully extend out, like so. Bring these down, so that you have this groove here that's gonna slot in, and then these are going to tab together at several points along the shaft. <laughs> shaft. Uh, the arms are going to collapse inwards. Uh, before we do that though, we want to rotate this section around like so. They're going to go into the center and into the center and you should be able to see that there's a tab in amongst the two of them there. Those are going to push and lock in to place. Make sure that the hands are rotated inwards so the thumbs have this section here 
Uh, we can bring this panel down either side, rotate the arms around, and there's a small tab just on the back there that's going to push, and that's now going to lock these pieces here into position. Then have these locking pieces here to make sure that this comes down and tabs in. Turn your Megatron over, and if you look at the back here, we have tabs uh, in two places. So make sure that this section is tucked in here nicely. I actually had this lipped under, so this wasn't sitting quite square. Uh, you want to have it so it looks like this. Okay, so we're going to need to address this when we come back. We pull this section back, and if you look here, it's going to tab in on that foot. And again, over here on this foot. And if we look here, there's also a tab push and lock in on that part of the leg. This panel folds down into here. If you look, there's a hole just on the front there. These are actually going to line up. With this tab here, and that's gonna push. And lock in to position. Yeah, we can then rotate Megatron over. I want to pull this panel piece up and this unibrow piece that's on a hinge just pull that away from the face and just bring that down it's almost like a bumblebee style battle mask it just covers off the front of the face like so make sure all these are tidied up now you know you've got this at the right angle with angle when these little hook pieces here line up with the underside of that chest right and now that we've got the wings out, we can extend them on both sides like so we have this panel here and this is going to come out this piece here it's going to come down this just goes square this panel here unfolds and if we look trying to do this whilst holding it all for the camera there is a tab just on the underside so these two will marry up like so and we have this hinged piece here lock this in this is then going to come up and push locking into there and then we've got these wings on the side like this that's all gonna tab in and again on this side bring this one up round lock bring this one down and join those in nicely together and just make sure that all of this is tabbed in as it's meant to be. Bring in the gun mount and if you look on the back here there's a small tab just sits under there and that allows the gun to be stored on that back section and we can just pop this piece in here and then this is going to just tab on the side like so. And there we have him fully transformed up. I tried to make that as clear as I could. Uh, the instructions aren't actually that great. Hasbro and Takara are pretty good normally, but uh, this is a bit of kind of guesswork to do with them labeling things as well, telling us what's actually going on. But that's pretty much his alt mode. I love this kind of huge chunk of die cast. Uh, it's not bad at all, really. I mean, it looks pretty close to what he looked like in the movie, I mean, I'm not gonna keep him in this mode. Uh, I don't think anybody's actually going to. They're gonna have him displayed up in his bot mode because bot mode is absolutely sublime but the fact that it all kind of changes up holds together and is more than just laying him down <laughs> that, i have to give them credit for that i mean i think they've done a pretty decent job it's a nice solid piece it all locks together nicely if you have any questions about the uh, transformation i'll try my best to answer them like i said i did try and capture as much of it on camera as humanly possible it's quite difficult to hold the camera, check everything's in focus, check everything's on screen, and to kind of have everything where it's meant to be. But uh, I think I think we worked it out. I think we got there, and the overall result is rather spiffing. Now, as far as I can tell, there are no wheels underneath to prevent any scratching, uh, but not that you're really going to need them. Uh, absolutely blown away by this piece, and so so glad that they're tackling the movie bots and the Beast Wars bots and 
the MP cartoon as well. It's a very good time to be an MP collector. Thank you all for watching and until next time, from myself and Megatron, ah, goodbye. And just because I completely missed it prior to editing, uh, these actually unfold from the underside as well. And the hands can just be rotated. And there's a tab at the top and at the bottom here. So we can tidy up those hands either side of the jet.